surgeons who work with amputating limbs. What was your worst error of? A uh, moment? Surgeon here. Have a few stories. 1. Call to the ed to evaluate a irritable sore injury to Armo. Found a mid forium almost complete amputation hanging on by a skin bridge. We were able to reattach it, and I think the patient has good muscle function, but tenuous sensation back now. 2. My intern year. Got a consult for a cyclist who was blindsided by a pickup truck. Entire leg was completely mangled. He arrived intubated, and sedated with lots of other injuries. Dude never woke up. It was the first time I saw a leg filleted open from trauma. With exposed femur, also fractured. And multilevel open tip fib fracture. Just hanging out of the tissue in the addition. We amputated the leg at the shin, and then femur, while trying to save him. He died of massive kidney failure from muscle injury. Dead muscle protein clogs the kidneys like taking a big dump clogs your toilet. Kidneys failed causing liver to fail. And then lungs fill with fluid means they cannot ventilate. And cardiac issues follow from electrolyte abnormalities. No amount of existing technology can bring you back from that. Unfortunately. 3. One of my worst cases was a patient with really bad sepsis from an infection. All the blood vessels in your extremities constrict. So amputating fingers ice no at all that common. But this was catastrophic. As we ultimately had to amputate all four limbs. I'll never forget writing that up report. You list each procedure for these documents. And it went. 1. Amputation left arm. 2. Amputation right arm. 3. Amputation left leg. 4. Amputation right leg. Patient was a family guy fan and said their Halloween costume would be the pirate the following year. At least they did not lose their sense of humor. Cause that was ultimately some funny shit. When the blood was green. A rare disease caused by overdose of migraine medicine. This I snow at 100% on point. But I think close enough, and I think interesting. I am now a head and neck surgeon. But during my trauma rotation as an intern we had an extremely inebriated guy come in who had been hit by a car just outside of the party he had been at, and suffered a traumatic amputation, the accident knocked his leg off at the knee. So he has wheeled into the trauma gurney on a bed, and his leg is brought into the same room literally in a bucket of ice. The guy was super combative, trying to push us around, and at one point literally yelled a fuck off, let me walk it off. Uh. By my calculations he will have made it one step. Two tops. Surgery resident here. The oh fuck moment doesn't really happen in the or. But can happen after. One consideration is always at what level. Do you need to amputate? The toe. A transmitter tarsal. BKA or aka. The low or above knee amputation. If you decide too much some sicker or more elderly patients may never regain mobility again. If you choose too little. The disease process. Infection or ischemia might not be controlled or won't heal and you end up going back for more. The realization you have to go back for more is the moment. I remove a lot of eyes. When training, I had a nasty one that I just cold no at grip with forceps while I was making the main cut in the optic nerve. I had to resort to gripping it with my fingers. As you are imagining, I made the cut. It shot through my fingers like a grape. Hit me in the chest. Rolled down my gown, bounced off my foot, and rolled about 10 feet on the floor, leaving a bloody snail trail. It was a lunch break change so about 10 people were in the room switching over. I headed upstairs, when I was done to join my preceptor in another case. He sees me walk in, sees a bloody spot on my shoe cover and asks. Oh where you added no it drop there I did you? Oh uh, my head just sank. I work in the quality department for a large hospital system. We had a dog take off the right foot, instead of the left. That was a lot of fun paperwork, as well as a lawsuit. Wrong side surgeries are surprisingly more common than you would think. Wrong side amputation however is thankfully more rare. Not a surgeon, but a leg amputee. I was reading the notes from my surgery and the doctor stripped the screws when trying to remove the titanium plate that was holding my leg together. He had to call in backup. Agreed with the surgeon above that our training is so long slash detailed that we don't have these moments frequently. However, in residency I was doing a hemipelvectomy, essentially a removal of half of a patient's pelvis with or without removal of that leg, with my attending surgeon and we came to a crucial step. After a few hours of dissection, 
and planning we had made our cuts on the pelvis basically planning and mapping out the portion we would remove. The time came for us to complete the cuts by levering out the half of the pelvis with our hands which required a lot of force. After the levering, there was an audible crack, expected, but then the wound immediately filled with blood, unexpected. My training too, that point told me to immediately pack the wound and hold pressure. My attending looked at me and said keep holding pressure and then scrubbed out, took off his gown and gloves and left the room. I'm now standing there over this young patient holding pressure with all my might so that my arms are shaking. I looked to anesthesia and his PA and asked what the hell was going on. Here I'm single handedly keeping this patient alive with no direction or immediate game plan about how to fix our problem. This was my oh fuck moment. An eternity, it seemed, went by and my attending came back in. Scrubbed in. And we then methodically isolated the large bleeding vessels and tied them or slash cauterized them. Afterwards I asked him what he was doing. He said over the years he had learned, if he had a rise in anxiety from something unexpected, I guess his oh fuck moments, he would take a breather, whether physically removing himself from the situation or not, to refocus and psyche himself up to fix the issue. This was one of my greatest learning moments of my career. Not a surgeon. But I work in a facility that helps with rehabilitation of amputees and getting them walking again. I watch a resident go to stop a door from closing with his stump and it was like the world slowed down. From the moment I saw him move his stump to stop it. To the point of impact I was screaming oh fuck that's gonna hurt so bad. And it did. He looked at me and just cried. I pushed him back to his room in his wheelchair, and he apologized profusely saying that it's just instinct cause he had a leg there for so long. He ended up splitting the stitches back open and the infection that came after ended with him going from a mid-shin amputation to above the knee the next week. He was a great guy. He's walking and back to living his regular life again. Or nurse here. Recently did a below the knee amputation. The leg was severed, and I was passing it off to the circulating nurse for specimen. Went to take a clamp off a large artery and my poor co-worker got a big spray of blood. Felt terrible. Exclamation mark. The first surgery I saw as a nursing student was a toe removal. Poor patient had to have his big toe removed due to a diabetic ulcer that had gotten infected. I was so afraid of the thought of getting nauseous with my first surgery. I didn't eat breakfast that day. The case started at noon I was wrapped in the sterile gown and mask slash hair cover slash shoe covers. I was positioned by the circulating nurse in a spot with a great view, but wouldn't get in the way. The case started, and the doc started cauterizing bleeding veins slash capillaries right off the bat. I learned that cauterizing flesh smells a lot like searing steak. My empty stomach and hungry brain didn't know the difference. And I could hear my stomach growling at the smell. I thought it would be just my embarrassment. Until the surgeon and nurse both looked at me. They could hear it too. I'm not sure what I said. But I was glad my mask hid how I was struggling not to cry. It was awkward until the doc took the severed toe and tossed it over the patient and into the formalin container. He had great aim. I was first assisting on a emergent guillotine ankle disarticulation. You basically just rip and cut the foot off from the leg and leave the bones sticking out. I was providing traction on the intensely infected foot while the surgeon sliced through the remaining tendons holding it in place. When the last one snapped I fell back, holding on to the now independent foot. Squeezing a load of green pus out onto my chest. Was just thankful it hit the gown and not my exposed neck. I am not a surgeon, but I did rotate in surgery back in my med school days. My first day on surgery rotation I was assigned to the trauma team. This was at a level 1 trauma center in an inner city hospital in New York. It just happened that on my first day, all the residents were in a meeting so when the trauma surgeon needed an assistant. She asked me to join her for an emergency above acne amputation of about infected leg, wet gangrene and a very poorly controlled diabetic. So my first day on surgery I am in the or holding this man as infected leg while the surgeon saws it off. After she is done, she literally squeezes out pus from the thigh. The odor was putrid. It is one of those smells that lingers for days. For the surgeon it was just another day. But for me, it was definitely an Ariafuko moment. Edit. Removed extra rest from a Urapuso. 
Seriously, please like and subscribe, and comment something nice, or tell me your non-existent story. I'm literally a hard-working Reddit slave. I want a real surgeon to come and tell a story about when they locked their keys in the car or something. As a med student I used a jiggly saw to remove a dead leg from just above the knee from a man who was homeless and horribly diabetic. When it came off the surgeon said err here, err and handed it to me. Then he said err take a picture. It errs your first one. Exclamation mark. Err like someone was gonna have me hold it like a fish I caught. He was joking. But I was freaked out and dropped it on the floor. Such a weird moment in my training. Medical student, future orthopedic surgeon. On my vascular surgery rotation. We had a gentleman who initially came in after a left EMA, transmitter tarsal amputation. Where your toes are amputated, that wasn't healing and becoming infected. The next step after that was a BKA, baloney amputation. In an effort to both stop the infection from progressing higher up his leg, and also be able to receive adequate blood flow to heal. That surgery was executed well. But unfortunately the day he was cleared to work with physical therapy, he fell on the other, right, knee, which created a hematoma that later became infected. About a month later, when I had transitioned from vascular to orthopedics, we performed a salvage acca above knee amputation on that leg. Our gentleman went from being able to walk with difficulty to losing both legs in the span of about 2 months.